There are more than 300 provincial parks in British Columbia, and each year some 20 million people visit them. Most of the visitors are from our province, but many come from other parts of Canada, the United States, and from as far away as Germany and Japan. They're of all ages, each one different from the other, but they all have one thing in common. They all depend on park staff for a safe and enjoyable visit. They come in cars, recreational vehicles, on bikes or on foot. Some with all the luxuries, other with simple basic necessities. But they are all visitors to parks, and without them, you wouldn't have a job. So in every park, it's your job to make each visitor feel welcome. So you have to be a good host. And like any good host, you have to be prepared for just about anything. Visitors will ask you questions about, well, where's the nearest laundromat to please help me find my lost child? Every park has information shelters like this, and there's lots of information on them. But people will ask you questions about things that are not on these shelters. They'll want to know where they are in the park. They'll want to know what is there to do in this park. They'll want to know what's going on around the park, what facilities there are. What activities? Not just in the park, but down the road a piece. And you'll have to have some of those answers. There's rules and regulations for every park. You should know about them as well. I can remember a time when one of our interpreters was working on a display. Excuse me, are you busy here? I'm working on a display, but can I help you? Oh, I sure hope so. Yesterday was a real disaster. We got away a little bit late, and I guess my wife forgot to pack in the tent fly. So we get out here, and it rains last night. We got a tent full of wet sleeping bags, three howling kids, and a wife who's threatening to divorce oh, me. That's terrible. Is there some place we could go and dry out the sleeping bags, and also get another tent fly and perhaps some nap the gas, and maybe even a bottle of booze? There is a village up the road called Langford where there is a shopping centre which has a restaurant and a store, even a hardware store, to get some more naphtha gas. And if you'd care to come over to the information desk with me, I can show you on a map how to get there. Oh, is there a laundromat and perhaps some place where I can pick up another tent fly and some naphtha gas? I think there is. There's a, a laundromat and a hardware store, so you can probably pick up some of those camping things there. Now, when's the rain going to stop? I feel like I should build an ark. <laughs> I wish I could answer that. I don't know. Well, what can you do around here in the rain? What would you do? Would you tell him not to be so wet behind the ears? Think up some rainy day activities on the spot? Invite him to bring his family over and watch what you're doing? Or this? Quite a bit. We have a number of hiking trails. There are programs that we have here in the evening. And we have a number of brochures where you can identify trees for yourself. Again, if you care to come over to the desk with me, I can give you a few of these and you can take a look at them for yourself. Oh, that's great. Now you can stop the rain. I wish I could. Would you like to come over to the information desk with me? Sure. Now, where was that again? Turn right when you come out of the campground onto the highway, a mile up, turn right again, and about three miles up on your left, you'll find the shopping center that has the liquor store, the restaurant, the laundromat, and the hardware store where you should be able to fill all your needs. Oh, that's great. Is there anything to do there in town? If you drive a little further into Victoria, there are a number of different things you can do. This calendar of events by tourism indicates what's happening in different times of the summer, if you'd like to take that along. And also, this guide which tourism puts out indicates some of the areas that might be of interest to you that you might want to visit while oh, you're in town. Oh, that's great. You've been a lot of help. Now if you could only stop the rain, I'd be perfectly happy. I'd enjoy it if the sun would start coming out too. Okay, thanks very much. Before you go, I've got a number of brochures as well that might be of interest to you and to your children. If you'd like to take, take those along as well, then when the sun does start shining, maybe you'll have some things to do here. Great. Thanks very much. Okay, have a good holiday. Thank you. Well, that visitor got himself all dried out, and his family and he had a great time. And it was because they got good information. You'll get phone calls. People will ask you questions over the telephone that you may not be prepared for. They may take you by surprise. There was a time when a phone call came in from California.
Good afternoon, Parks and Outdoor Recreation. Yes, I'm calling from California. Do you have the parks information there? Yes, we do. What can I do for you? Oh, that's good. What's the best time of the year to visit? Uh, September, if you want to uh, get away from the crowd, is a, is a very good time to come. Oh, that's good. Can we get a reservation? No, I'm sorry. We don't have a reservation system. It is under consideration at this time, however. Oh, we're traveling in a Winnebago. Do you have hookups and sandy stations? Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We don't have hookups. We do have sandy stations and flush toilets. Okay. Can I get more information on that? Just Certainly. Second. If you just give me your uh, name and address, and I'll send some material right on to you. We've got a new park map and a regional map that I can forward. Oh, great. It's Ralph Smith. Okay. 200 Buena Vista Drive, Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. 872-314. Okay, Mr. Smith, I'll get that stuff right out to you. Oh, by the way, if we're coming up in September, should I bring my skis along? Can we get a little skiing? How would you answer? Would you laugh? Hang up angrily? Tell him to watch out for the Grizzlies, too? Or this? No, that won't be necessary, Mr. Smith. The, the temperatures are quite temperate. Um, they, we do have, you know, snow up in the mountains, of course, but not down where you're going to be camping. I'll send some information on to you. Okay, thank you for calling. Bye-bye. With the information they receive, those people from California should be pretty happy when they arrive. But some people arrive upset. Something's gone wrong. And they're prepared to blame anyone. And it's up to you to make sure that their visit gets off to a good start. And it certainly isn't always easy. I remember at the gatehouse one time, Today. Pretty good, thanks. How are you? Oh, not so bad. Uh, how many are you in your party? Uh, there's three of us. Three? Okay. And are you planning on staying long? Well, what are your fees here? Six dollars for the night. Six dollars? That's right. But we only paid four last night. Well, it's six dollars in the park, and that's, of course, including your facilities of the water and the firewood and the servicing of the grounds. Well, have you got hookups? Are there any electric hookups? No, there's or? no electrical hookups. No about, hookups? No. We only paid four last night. Well, six dollars in the park, and there's more patrol and whatnot being the larger park. Showers? Uh, no, there's no showers. No though. showers? There's washroom facilities. Uh, you're paying, of course, for your wood and your water. There's an extensive hiking trail, and visitor information is just over here if there's anything else you'd like to know. But what is there to do around here? What would you say? How about, you can drop dead, ma'am? Or, go read the notices on the board. Or, I haven't got time to answer any more of your silly questions. Or this. Ah, uh, there's extensive hiking trails in, within the park, and of course there's a bit of fishing, and there's an information board just right here that lists all kinds of activities and things to do. Oh, so what, about, um, what about animals here? What happens with him? Oh, all pets are to be on a leash in the park. A little dog like that? Mm hmm on a leash. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, well, I think we'll, we'll probably only be staying here just one, one night. Just one night, and what's your name, then? Jones. Okay, that's the one night. Just one night. Mm -hmm. And that's six dollars. That's six dollars. Six dollars, imagine. Okay, thank you. Okay, then whereabouts is our campsite? It's number seven. It's just up this road here. Up and, this road here. And to your right. And to your right. And to your right. And it's number seven. Number seven. Right, and here's your receipt. Okay. Okay, here, you take the dog. Six dollars. Have a nice day. The gatehouse attendant handled that situation with good sense. Turns out the visitors had a really good time. Some visitors can present a real challenge when they don't realize that they're at risk. See that mountain? The other day a visitor wanted to hike up there late in the evening. Fortunately, park ranger was coming down the trail at the same time.
Uh, is this the uh, the uh, trail to the summit up here? Yes, it is, but you're not going to head up there now, are you? Sure, it's a nice evening for a hike, don't you think? Well, it's a lovely evening for a hike, but I wouldn't recommend you go uh, there this time of night. Uh, it's uh, 10 kilometers and... Uh, How far is that? That's about six miles. Oh, no problem. I jog six miles every day. I'll be back well, in about an hour and a half or so. No problem. It'll take you quite a while, really, and you won't be back before dark. The trail's right. a little indistinct, and, uh, you know, you could miss it. I think you're being a little bit foolhardy to, to try it uh, now. I, I'd, I'd, uh, I don't think you should do it. Well, I really don't need your permission at all, do I? How would you handle that? Would you say, look, fella, you know who is going to have to get up in the middle of the night to rescue you? Or, well, I hope your insurance is paid up. Or, okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. Or this. Well, I know you don't need my permission, but I would uh, recommend an alternative. Uh, it's a fantastic hike uh, that you're setting out on, and uh, you'll get a lot more out of it if you take off uh, in the morning. You'll have the whole day to uh, really appreciate the fantastic scenery up there. And uh, I'd really recommend that you uh, go to the uh, waterfall uh, trail because that's just across the valley, only an hour from here. And you'll be back by uh, evening and uh, uh, it's really worth uh, worthwhile seeing the waterfall. It's a beautiful pool at the bottom. Um, why don't I show you the beginning of the trail here? Sure, that sounds good. Those mosquitoes are getting pretty fat now. Yeah, they are. That young hiker will probably never forget that park ranger, the advice he gave him, or the hike he took the next day. You have to be on the alert and ready to deal with things when they happen. We nearly had real trouble in the campground last week. The patrolman was on his rounds. Portable one. Portable one, come in. Portable one to base, go ahead. We have noisy campers at 78. All right, I'll get on there right away, 10-4. Evie, ma'am. Uh-huh. I'd like to talk to you and your friends about the loud noise. We've had some complaints from campers next door to you. Here? No, thank you. I'd just like to talk to you and your friends about the loud noise. Sure now. Positive. Just want to talk to you about the noise and the litter in, this, in the campsite. Hey guys, got problems. A turkey out here wants to turn music down. Hey, it's the Jolly Green Giant. What's the problem? I'd like to talk to you about turning the music down. We're not. We're just having a good time. Yeah, it's too loud. Some of the campers next to you have been complaining about the loud music. I'd also like to talk to you about cleaning the mess up on the ground here. No, well, we're not doing anything wrong, I don't think. Is there any law against having a good time out here? No, there is no law against it, except that everybody else in this park here comes for a good time, too. So what happens if we don't turn the music down? What do you think? Would you tell them what to do? Or would you call for help? Have a shouting match? Confiscate their beer? Or this? Look, the way it is now, we've got three choices. We can call in the RCMP, which you don't particularly want to do. We can evict you from the campground the way it is. Or we can sit down and discuss this thing, and you people can turn down your music. And then everybody can enjoy staying overnight, as well as you people. And that's all there is to it. Okay, I'm going to turn the music down. Come on, Willie. Oh, he's going to kick us out of the park. Oh, come on, Willie, you wimp. I don't want to get kicked out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. I'll be back later on. I'm doing my rounds to check on you. Thanks yeah. very much. Yeah, right. Sure. Everything's quiet at campsite 20. I'll check on them later, but I don't think we'll have any trouble. You have to know the rules to be able to enforce them, and you must do it calmly. And keeping calm is the name of the game, especially if there's an emergency. Over there is a salt marsh and an inlet, and it's a great place for boating and fishing. And last summer, we thought we had a real emergency on our hands. Oh, please, can you help me? I think wrong? something terrible's happened. My, my husband and son went out canoeing this morning, and they were supposed to be back two hours ago, and, and they're not here yet. What's your name, please? It's Kathy Adams. Okay, Kathy. Uh, where did they leave from? They, w they went out from the visitor center. 
Okay. What kind of canoe were they in? A yellow clipper canoe. <laughs> were they wearing life jackets? Yes, yes, they were yellow life jackets. Okay, I'll get on it right away. I'm sure everything's just fine. Oh, please do something. Well, what would you do? Would you tell her to call the Coast Guard? Joke her out of her panic? Tell her they went off at their own risk? Or this? Everything will be just fine. Okay, I just, just calm down. I'm sure everything's all right. I'll make a call right away. Mobile One, Mobile One, this is Goldstream Headquarters. We have an emergency out at the visitor center. A man and his young son went out canoeing this morning, haven't returned. They're in a yellow clipper canoe, both wearing yellow life jackets. Right, I've got it. I'll launch the boat right away. We've got our park staff on it. Um, Bill has got a radio telephone in his boat, and he's going to be calling in when he finds them. I'm sure everything's just fine. That bay oh, is very, very so. calm, and it's a nice day. It'll be just fine. Why don't you come in and sit down and have some coffee, and we'll wait for their phone call. Oh, thank you. It only takes a few minutes for them to get down there in the boat. I'm sure your, your husband and your son are on their way back now. It'll just take a very short time. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I'm sure they're, they're just fine. Portable one to headquarters. That'll be Bill. Goldstream headquarters. Would you please inform Mrs. Adams that we've located her husband and son? They're on their way home. They'll be arriving at the Visitor's Information Center if you'd like to go and meet them there. They found them. They're on their way oh. to the visitor center. You can go down there and meet oh, them over there in a few minutes. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hi. Hi, are you Mrs. Adams? Yes, I am. Oh, good. We've located your husband and son and. Uh, oh. They've just arrived. Uh, you should be able to catch them uh, right over there by the beach there. That's Great. wonderful. I really feel foolish having made such a fuss. You did the right thing by telling us about this right away so we could act immediately. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And that was a happy ending. So you see, it's all up to you. Happy endings, happy times, happy beginnings. And you start by making the visitor feel welcome. <laughs>